Hello, hello, and welcome back to our Chemical Serenity Pagan podcast. Let's take a walk through the woods, across the fields and moors, down to the beach where we can sit by the campfire and talk about all things pagan, druidry and witchy in a way that works with your path in this experience of being human. My name is Carolyn and I've been on my spiritual path for the last 45 years, having been launched into it by spirit in my early teens. Now, if you're new to this podcast or the channel, then welcome. Find your earpods, a favourite brew and a comfy chair. Sit back and join us. Everyone is welcome here. We are all inclusive as the paths we walk and the choices we make are for many different reasons and for different experiences. And I love to hear from you in, in the comments below about your experiences. If you're a regular listener, then thank you once again for stopping by. It's lovely to have you here. So, if you listened to my previous podcast that was on YouTube only because I wanted to add in some visuals, which I can't do on other platforms, then have you given anything a try yet? Now, if you haven't listened in, you may want to just pause here, jump back and go and listen to the previous one on YouTube. I'll leave a link in the show notes, but you should find it there. And um, it was just over a week ago. Now, have a listen to that one. Maybe give a few things a try um, and then you'll perhaps understand parts of what I'm going to talk about next. Now I did say I was going to cover plant, um, a plant and so today is the one plant we all know and of course love, the nettle. Now whether you battle against them every year in your garden or you have to forage for them on walks, I don't think there are many people who can say that they have never been stung by a nettle or in my case by a lot of nettles having fallen in them at quite a young age in my shorts. Now go on, hands up, who else? I can't be the only one here who has not been stung severely. Now, I'm convinced they leapt out at me as well. I mean, do I look and sound stupid enough to go and throw myself into a bed of nettles? Exactly. But what were they trying to tell me? And still are. So let's do the science of it first. Now, the Latin name for nettle is Etica dioica. Now, Etica derives from the Latin word uro, which means I burn. And the term urticaria, also known, is known as like hives and wheels or welts. And dioecious means that it has the male and female parts on different plants. Now, nettle's common name is thought to have been derived from the Old English word netel, meaning needle. There are 500 species of nettle across the world. And in the US, there is a variation to the common nettle that we have in Britain and across Europe, um, which is common a common US plant but I'm not familiar with that one or its uses so if that's something that you use over um, in the US and you know more about it please leave a comment below because enlighten me because differences like this are, are always interesting to learn about now history and folklore of nettle so they have survived two ice ages but only really took over when our ancestors started clearing away all the forests nettles grow in best in fertile soil and I was always taught that if you have nettles then the ground that they are in is really good stuff and if you've allowed them to grow in your garden then you'll know that they grow up to three feet tall given the chance in fact I've seen some a little bit taller now they do um, grow to certain heights in my garden because I've forgotten that they're there and they're hidden behind a shed which is quite useful actually because then I do have a lot of seeds at certain times of the year now they flower from June to September and then they go to seed and nettles will support so much wildlife and there are over 40 species of insects including many butterflies like the tortoiseshell for example that feed exclusively on nettle and in late summer many of the birds will eat the seeds the Roman legionnaires used to use nettles on their body to increase circulation and help with their joints. And one of the many folk remedies I have also read is that people would sting parts of the body to ease aching joints and help with the circulation. And that nettle can make a great facial. Now, can you believe by stinging the face to bring blood to the surface, it's great for cell renewal? I am really not that brave. But if you've actually used nettles this way, please let me know in the comments because I would love to hear about your results. Um, something like this absolutely fascinates me. And I can understand why it was done, to be fair. But, oh dear, to do that. I, mean, I do understand why the Roman legions legionnaires did it as well because, you know, they must have had pretty poor circulation standing in very cold, wet, damp Hadrian's Wall. That's where my vision is. 
of <laughs> I've got this vision of Roman Roman legionnaires wandering up and down Hadrian, Hadrian's wall in outpost, whacking themselves <laughs> with nettles. It's not a good view, really. Now, nettles also contain long fibres that could be spun for cloth, especially here in Britain where flax didn't grow easily. So if you snap open a dry stalk, you can actually see all the fibres. Now, Mary Queen of Scots found nettle sheets on her bed were far nicer than flax, and Scotland still made cloth up to the 16th century from nettle fibres. Samuel Pepys enjoyed eating nettle porridge. And Sir William, Sir Walter Riley, is quoted to have said that nettle grown under glass would make an excellent substitute for kale. During the Great War, when Germany ran out of cotton, they used wild nettles. And in the Himalayas, washcloths are made with 100% Nepalese giant nettle. There are also companies who use nettle to create clothing to this day. And the fabric is actually called, now I've always called it Rami, but it could be Rami. Now Hans Christian Andersen's story, The Princess and the Elven, the elven the princess and the 11 swans um their coats were woven from nettles as well so there's also folklore stories that say that the green serpent lightning gave the nettle its sting and that nettles are dedicated to the earth fae in the austrian tyrol nettles were thrown in the fire to stop thunderstorms and the anglo-saxons made a nettle beer to drink well it's probably because to be fair they were probably <laughs> plenty of nettles about and there wasn't a great deal of anything else safe to drink except mead now being high in vitamin c a spring tonic was also made to help our ancestors and now imagine living on grain and salted meat for the whole of winter and no other green vegetables available over that period you will be needing something come spring so all that said how can we utilize this amazing plant so in the garden now nettles can make a cracking fertilizer they are actually full of nitrogen, calcium and magnesium. So if you find you've got too many nettles and you don't want to use them for any other reason, rather than just cut them out and chuck them into the composter or your garden recycling bin, um, make some fertiliser for your plants. Now, a quick and easy recipe is to just fill a bucket with nettles, top it up with water and then weigh it down, um, weigh the nettles down in the bucket with a brick and leave alone for at least a month in the corner of the garden. When it absolutely stinks, it's ready. However, if you have a dog, I suggest you put something either over the top of it, um, not necessarily to diminish all the um, oxygen getting in, but something to protect it or hide it in the corner where the dog can't get near it. Because... My dog used to sneakily drink the foul water, which is likely and has come back up again or out the other end all over the carpet. I also had another one that would knock buckets over of anything stinky like that and roll in it. I mean, what is it with dogs and stinky water? Anyway, if you have left your stinking bucket of nettles long enough and managed to survive the dog... Drain the water off into a suitable canister and then you can throw the old nettles onto the compost. Then all you need to do is a solution of one part stinky nettle water to ten parts rain or tap water and use it on your plants and see how it works. Um, some plants will respond to it. Some might not like it being so strong, so you might have to use it. Um, and so Try it out with different plants to see what the ratio of stinky water to fresh water is like and if you've got comfy in your garden you can also do the same with that and or add it to the nettles at the beginning aphids absolutely love nettles they are a good companion plants so if you don't want aphids on your lupins dahlias gladiolis um, mine seem to get coated every year in the garden with aphids each and you know there's not enough ladybirds or ladybugs um, to clear them off so why not try companion planting and perhaps leave some nettles behind i mean if your garden is a show garden and you prefer not to look at nettles that's fair enough you'd have to find another way but nettles do make a good companion plant if you don't have a garden you'll probably find nettles out foraging um if you go out for walks and you like to forage then you can all they always grow in the same place so if you find nettles in a certain place out foraging you can probably guarantee they'll come back again the following year. So how can we use nettles medicinally? Well, homeopathy treats the symptoms as like for like. So, for example, someone suffering from hay fever or allergies would be treated with the substance they have an allergy to. 
Now, this form of medicine has been um, around since Hippocrates, but uh, um, has also really taken off in the last 200 years when a German doctor called Samuel Hahnemann was researching ways to reduce the way in which many side effects of drugs affected his clients, including poisons. Now, he documented all his work, which formed the foundations of homeopathy practice to this day. According to the Society of Homeop Homeopaths, in India, more than 100 million people depend solely on homeopathy for health care and homeopathy is the second largest system of medicine in the world. And I've also been told that if you are qualified homeopathist, say in the UK, I mean, probably the same around the world, um, and you travel to India, you are classified over there as a doctor because it's so important to them. Now, King Charles is a user of um, homeopathy and our late Queen Elizabeth II was patron of the London Hospital of Integrated Medicine, which formerly was the London Homeopathy um, Hospital. Now, many people have tried homeopathy and use it regularly. Nettle in, hermi, uh, in homeopathy is called urtica urans and is used for allergic reactions, burns, scalds, bee stings, prickly heat. So you can see that like there is treating like. Now, nettle has been used for a long old time. Back in the 1300s, the physicians of Midway made ointments to stop bleeding, both externally and internally. They made butters and added it to other ingredients to make balms, and the leaves will stop bleeding, and herbalists still use it to this day to deal with boil spots and hemorrhaging. Nettle leaves contain caffeine and malic acid, which are an anti-inflammatory. So people use nettle tea as a tonic, as I've also already mentioned, the spring tonic that our ancestors would have um, probably tried taking after coming out of winter. But they use it as a tonic now to treat hay fever, arthritis, rheumatism. So it's also been tested to help with menstrual bleeding, enlarged prostate and premature balding in men. However... <laughs> If you just end up going, yay, I can just have nettle. Don't jump up and down all excited about self-medicating. If you are listening, seek advice from your GP or a clinical herbalist. And if you follow an Ayurvedic path, then nettle is bitter, salty, cool and dry. So food and drink. If you are a regular user of nettles, you know that you can boil them and eat them like spinach. And they contain some great vitamins of potassium, iron, manganese, vitamin A and C. Now, nettle tea and nettle soup are great to make, but you can also add it to pesto and even porridge. And if you're thinking of making tea, it's very simple. Just put on a pair of gloves, find your nettles and take a good handful off the very top leaves. Now, it would depend if you're making a teapot to share, so um, how many you need to use. But the spring nettles that are coming up this month, as I'm recording this, we are just at the beginning of March. So the spring nettles um, are the best one to use the very tops of as they are they are full of all of the vitamins that you're looking for so work on um, a ratio of two cups of water to one cup of nettle tops and then let them steep for five minutes strain them off and then you can add a little bit of honey or stevia to taste and then sit back and drink now let me know what you think of that as well um, if you are forward thinking, you can keep the nettles and add them to a soup or stew the same day rather than waste them. Um, if you can't think that far ahead, like, no, usually like me, then just pop them in the composter. Nettle seeds can be dried and you need to look carefully at the plant to see which one has the seeds. Now, the seeds are grown on the female plant, whereas the male plant will have some very tiny flowers, which you can just about see. So you do need to look at them. Don't just sort of pick the top off and go, oh, yeah, that's it. And then you go home and think, oh, God, I'll come back with his flowers. Um, the seeds hang down. They're quite pendulous. So if you look closely at them, you can actually see that they are seeds. So gather your nettles however you like. Dry them carefully so that the seeds are still attached to the stalks. And once dried, the seeds will come off fairly easy. If you use like, you know, the back of a spoon in a, um, a wire mesh sieve, just press them down and it should release them from the dry stalks. You can then store them in an airtight container, but make sure that they are dried well. Um, I've, I don't use um, a, a dehydrator or a dryer for herbs, but you, you might do that already and um, that probably works quite successfully. Um, seeds are very nutritious. You can add them to your smoothies, but start with the teaspoon and see how that works and then perhaps add more at each time. Don't and don't take them at night. <laughs> they can be stronger than caffeine. Um, so as in most things, when you're new to taking these sort of things, introducing nettles into your diet, 
just do it slowly and see how you get on with them at first and then increase it or decrease it to suit your system. Nettle does have some contraindications, which um, I've noticed many people online never ever mention, and it's quite important. Nettles contain what's called vitamin K. So if a member of your family are taking blood thinners of any kind, you will need to check with your GP or pharmacist if they can drink or eat nettles. Now, the reason I'm saying this is that my father used to be on the well-known blood thinner called warfarin. Um, He wasn't allowed to eat any green plants unless it was with another non-green plant that wasn't on the list of you can't eat these. Now, he was allowed to have carrots or potatoes with any green plant. So if he had a portion of peas, he'd have to have a portion of carrots. Um, If he had a portion of kale or something else that was green, he'd have to have a portion of potato or carrots again. Um, so that he wasn't ingesting too much vitamin K. Now, it, it was a bit of a faff making dinner each night, especially as he's in his 80s and he likes peas. <laughs> now, thankfully, he was changed onto a different type of thinner about three years ago and he can now eat green plants again. Um, in fact, he just eats anything he likes now because he's um, 80 plus and doesn't care. Um, but I thought I'd share that experience as it was quite, I was, I was quite surprised Um because he doesn't mention, yeah, I, I looked up lots of different recipes and people saying, oh, yes, you can eat this because it's so important. But nobody covers the fact that nettles are green leaf and they have vitamin K. So if you're on blood thinners or you are thinking of using vitam- uh, nettles um, to get for the vitamin purposes, um, just check with your your health practitioner uh, or your pharmacist and just ask them if whatever thin is you're on if you can use them there's a likelihood that they I mean they'll know exactly what you need to do but I just felt that, that had to be said but also um, I was quite surprised um, that nettles don't go well with anyone taking um, low or high blood pressure tablets as well antidepressants obviously pregnant or lactating or diabetic so um And they can cause some gastric irritation. So, as I've said, it's always important if you're going to ingest nettles just to get some advice if um, you're worried at all. Don't let that put you off. Just it's quite simple. Pop into your pharmacist and say, I'm thinking of having some nettle tea or I'm thinking of using some nettles up in my garden. um, But I'm on the following medication. Obviously, if you're not on medication, go for it and let me know how you get on. So what can nettles teach us? Now, nettles are ruled by Mars, which is the red planet, and nettle energy is fire and the sign of Aries, which, of course, we're in March and it's the beginning of spring. Now, Mars, as you've probably guessed, is classically a male energy and connects to our willpower, drive and ambition to move forward. However, it can also relate to qualities of irritability, anger, negative thoughts and a short fuse. Nettle leaves, if you look at them, are serrated. They're like a knife. You can get a sharp burning rash with them, which is incredibly intense when stung by them. I know. Mars also rules our blood and nettle, um, as I've mentioned already, and it is a blood cleanser. But on the skin, nettle is hot and fiery. But when ingested as a tea, it's cooling and alkaline and reduces heat and irritation. Now, nettle's prickly outer reminds us that it can help with dealing with people who have prickly personalities. You may have this energy on your life from another person, family member, colleague, boss at work, or maybe you feel you need to clear your own personality. And sitting and working with nettle is very, very good for dealing with that issue. Whatever you do, don't rush out, cut a handful of nettles and try whacking someone at work with them in self-defence. That's not what Nettle is trying to teach us. Nettle is saying it can be protective against the against other people and helping you find the energy barriers to protect yourself and your aura from feelings of attack and perhaps, for want of a better word, against the evil eye. You may have heard of the figure of speech called Grasp the Nettle with Both Hands. Now this comes from Aesop's fable, The Boy and the Nettle. And it refers to if a nettle is grasped firmly, it doesn't sting, which means if you're going to tackle a problem, do it head on and with the intention. Um, Because if you faff around and try something with very little enthusiasm, it's just not going to work. If you want to work with nettle, then start now with the new spring leaves and try taking some time to sit with the plant before cutting any. Connect with its energy and ask permission to remove some leaves so that you can learn from the nettle. Just setting this intention in your own energy field will help you and the energy transference from the plant. 
Now, without this, you aren't really going to gain anything but a medicinal cup of tea. When really you want all the holistic value of the nettle to work with your energy. Take your time with the intention setting and add as you go along at each stage of working with a plant from cutting to either drying or making your soup or tea. Add in the intention and I suppose a blessing for the land, thank the plant, whatever you want to do. Now when it's time for collecting seeds, repeat the pattern and by this time the nettle will already be working with your energies as you have either drunk or eaten from that area of plant. So this leaves me with sort of one more thing to say. Um, if you do get stung, don't rush necessarily for the dock leaves. Instead, look around for plantain. Now, that's not plantain as in the one that looks like a banana. Um, I'm talking about the green leaved plant. There are two varieties you might see in your garden. Most gardens have plantain grown somewhere and it makes a much quicker and faster way to treat a sting. You can either try rubbing it or popping it onto whatever your sting is or chew it in your mouth to make like um, a pulp and place it on the sting. You can then wrap something around it, perhaps another leaf, to hold it in place for a while. Plantain is safe to chew for that purpose and the balm it creates is incredibly soothing and stops air getting to the sting, which in turn makes it burn even more. So thank you for listening in. If you use nettle and would like to share your thoughts on the plant, please leave a comment um, below, in the, especially on the YouTube channel. I haven't given any recipes for food because there's so many out there on the internet anyway. And I'm really about the deeper shamanic ways of working with plant energies. If you've enjoyed listening in, please like and subscribe, which will really help me out as it tells YouTube or the platform you're listening on that my podcast is quite useful. I'd like to thank my patrons for supporting me. Karen and Kate, thank you again, ladies. And if you'd like to be part of my Patreon, the links are below in the show notes. So anyway, I can't hang around this campfire any longer. Like, gosh, I've been here for ages waffling away about green plants that sting. Um, I've got another podcast to go and sort out and record for you. So I am off and I will see you all again very soon with much love and light. TTFN.